Welcome to the Athenian Maker podcast. Uh, I am Aida, coming to you from Athens, Greece. I am a seamstress, a knitter, a echo printer, weaver, and botanical dyer. You find me as the Athenian Maker on Instagram, and I also have an Etsy shop with the same name. This episode is going to be about my knitting projects, and I will record the second one, uh, a separate one about sewing and a little bit of echo printing on paper so let's start uh, with uh, what i am wearing at the moment this is uh, one uh, sweater that i made i think over two or three years ago and i have been wearing it a lot ever since uh, it is the jarad uh, sweater by megan nielsen and uh, I'm a view A from this pattern uh, and I made a few alterations. I have made also view B, but this one is view A and uh, the alteration I did uh, was uh, to add this, this little flounce, uh, just an alteration on the design because I didn't change the pattern for it. And I added this splitted flounce and also I made it cropped instead of a uh, full length. So um, let's start with uh, the knitting projects. First of all, I would like to talk about this uh, a cardigan that it is a finished knitting project. I um, made this uh, last summer. This was a test knit uh, for Anna Plexis. It is the stripes and buttons uh, cardigan. I finished it on September and I think the pattern was released in October last year. It is, uh, I have talked again about this uh, cardigan. It is um, a construction, uh, sideways con a construction. You start casting on all the stitches in the front. You work uh, towards the back, shaping the necklines uh, and armholes in between. And uh, after you have knitted all the bodies, then uh, you knit the sleeves, you sew them, and then the bands, the neck band and the button bands. Uh, this uh, pattern is designed to be knitted with uh, two colors uh, in order to have the vertical stripes. But instead of that, I used one of my yarns that I had uh, specially dyed to have uh, to be self-striping and uh, in, um, in, uh, in a big width so, so that you have um, longer uh, stripes. And um, you, it is actually a broken stripe because I made it to be like this. Uh, it is from my snow collection. And... Um, for the sleeves, uh, the pattern uh, um, calls for um, a, for one color to be solid, and um, but I really like the playing with the different stripes. So uh, I like the idea of having uh, vertical stripes on the bodies and horizontal stripes in the sleeves. So I did just that. I did also uh, with a similar yarn. I did the sleeves. And instead of uh, doing any shaping, in order to keep uh, the lines to be homogeneous, to be similar to each other and not change as the sleeve uh, got um, bigger, uh, I, I cast it on the number of, of uh, stitches that you were supposed to have here in the arm. And I cast it on here and I knit it straight up to the arm. And then of course I had to do the um, arm shaping. It was uh, really an easy make, uh, especially considering that I, I did not have uh, to change yarns for the stripes. And um, it was uh, very fun to knit something in a different construction than usually. And I really liked the result. I chose these buttons. I, at first I didn't know, um, I could not decide what uh, buttons to choose. I considered metallic and wooden buttons and also different colors but because there is so much information with the stripes, the colors, I thought that maybe it would be best to have these uh, little buttons that are 
um, close to the color of uh, the button band. I will insert some pictures of me wearing it so that you can see the fit. It is um, a close fit, um, almost zero uh, ease like this cardigan. And the back. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So this is one finished object and also um, in December I went to a little trip uh, in Meteora with a friend of mine. Meteora is a very beautiful area here in Greece uh, that has a natural phenomenon of uh, very high and uh, rocks that um, are like they are cut with a knife, very straight, and uh, it's uh, the nature is fantastic. I also made a little video there that I hope I'll find it to insert here so that you can see. And for that trip, I wanted to have a knitting project with me that was easy, and uh, so I cast it on in the train when we were going to Meteora. I cast it on a little pair of mitts. I these were start and finished in this journey, but I never, <laughs> I have not woven in the ends yet. I have totally forgotten about these mitts actually. It's just a simple pair of mitts with no pattern. I made this with a Shetland um, a DK uh, Shetland yarn and uh, they were knitted very fast because of that and also this color uh, i had this very um, quite a long time in my stash from when i first started dyeing and uh, i have dyed this with uh, platanus uh, with um, the fruit of platanus tree it's not actually fruit you don't eat it like an acorn of platanus and you take this beautiful beige so I have to, I, I consider it a finished project, but uh, I have to weave in the ends still. And also, um, about a month ago, I was uh, watching one of my favorite uh, podcasts uh, by Michelle, the My So-Called Handmade Life. I have not been watching many podcasts the last months about six months but uh, I happened to watch this episode from Michelle and uh, if you don't know her uh, YouTube channel I really recommend you check it out maybe it's something you like because uh, what I like about this episode that it, uh, about this podcast is that Michelle is very uh, creates some natural uh, conversation it's very um, she has a topic usually that she talks about and of course it's about knitting so uh, in this episode uh, it was not the, her last one because she released another one but i have not seen it yet it was in the previous one she uh, showed uh, one of her knitting that project that was uh, the sophie scarf by uh, petit knits is it petit knit or petit knits i'm not sure but i'm, I'm definitely sure that you know this pattern because ever since I have seen it all over on, on Instagram, it's everywhere. So it's a little scarf that you tie around the neck. And I really loved, uh, I found this idea very cute. I have not thought of making one before like this. And especially for me living in Athens, um, that is like, um, we have very mild uh, winter here in Athens like this year it was only one week that we had tem temperature at around zero degrees but now it is 20 22 degrees and it has been pretty much like this the entire winter so it's not very comfortable to wear uh, knitted um, sweaters especially woolen sweaters and big shawls 
and uh, so I like this idea of making this little scarf and so I decided to make my own I didn't use the Sophie uh, pattern I just um, went to my Vogue knitting uh, book uh, where there are different stitch uh, motifs and I picked one motif which is this one I really like the texture on this one and it is very simple to make as you need a, in stockinette and only in some points you create these bars that are made by knitting through the back loop when you are in the reverse stockinette and of course you purl them when you are in the stockinette side and I also added this garter edging to keep it from rolling but unfortunately that didn't work as it still rolls through this side through the, the reverse um, towards the reverse stockinette side and so this is it of course I have not washed it yet so maybe after I wash it and block it maybe it will stay better but now as you can see it curls a little bit and it's very cute as you wear it like this around the neck okay I had to one side is shorter and I just tie it like this I want to learn another way to tie this, maybe to look like a necktie, to make an, a nice beautiful knot. But till now I have been wearing it like this. And I have been wearing it a lot. I find this very cute. It's a very smart idea actually. To have these little scarves. And after making this one, I immediately wanted to knit another one. It took me about a week to finish this one and so I looked again uh, oh and I forgot to say that I have dyed this yarn with onion skins and I really love this color it is not as bright as yellow as it comes here it is more to an okra um, shade yes this is uh, this is how it really looks uh, this is dyed with onion skins and although onion skins are not the most stable dye like I expect after five or six years of uh, wearing and washing this all the time that it will start to fade a little bit the color it will not completely go but it will start to fade a little bit but I don't actually mind that and then um, I went for another one and um, because the yarn I chose it reminds me a little bit of a camouflage of army look it has like an army vibe and the truth is that I don't like anything uh, regarding uh, anything that um, reminds of army uh, and uh, all these camouflage looks which okay from the side of uh, fashion I understand it but because what it really is uh, I don't like it from this side of the really meaning of army anyway uh, so it is like this I have dyed this yarn with pomegranates and I had not um, when it was in the skein I had not realized that it reminds so much of uh, the camouflage uh, fabrics and um, I only realized that after I knitted the scarf but anyway since I dyed the yarn I knitted this I'm going to wear it anyway <laughs> so um, I looked for a stitch pattern to pair it with this but everything didn't look quite right to me because of the busy uh, print that you get from uh, the yarn and you could not really distinguish those stitch patterns and it was just like a messy thing without um, 
I didn't like the result so I ended up knitting this in a garter stitch and uh, here in the edging I did something like an I-cord edging I watched an episode from Knitting Traditions and she mentioned that she did that in one of her shawls I think that it was a half and half shawl, I'm not sure and so I, uh, I, I decided to do the same here and uh, the idea was to make this look like a triangular shape in the middle but there is no triangular shape here <laughs> I didn't manage to get what I wanted from this and so uh, and also I didn't uh, want to bother and to um, unravel it in the end and start and figure it out so I left it like this of course it is knitted from side to side and you start with uh, I started with three stitches and started to increase one stitch every 16 or no every 12 rows and only from the one side and this one it's a little bit smaller narrower than the other one mostly because I had less yarn but also I, I wanted to do it differently so this is it I find these little scarves to be very cute and petite knit was very was brilliant I know that uh, there are more patterns now because or maybe they were before also I don't know if this was the idea of petite knit but this is where I first saw it from them so um, it was a brilliant idea to make these little scarves so what else now let's start about works in progress ever since I finished uh, my uh, stripes and buttons cardigan I had back in September I wanted to cast on another garment the truth is that I don't want to um, continuously knit garments and stuff because although I'm not a minimalist I don't want to have too many things in general it makes me nervous and uh, and mostly because I don't wear like uh, I, do, I will not wear them because usually um, I have like uh, four to five outfits that I wear all the time in rotation and probably it is not the same outfits every year it's the ones that I like and I love more at that time and usually those are the ones that I have made um, the latest and also because I sew my own clothes everything that I wear is handmade so and uh, for that reason I just don't want to um, continuously make garments knitted garments non-stop because I know that I'm in the end they are just going to sit there in my wardrobe and so when I was trying to decide what to make uh, I considered first to start a yoke sweater that uh, I was going to make the pattern on my own and I started it, I cast it on and uh, it was going to be a striped yoke uh, I did that back in October and uh, after a few weeks I just, I was not feeling it, I didn't like the result and in general um, the last six months to seven months have been like I could not concentrate and could not take decisions of what I want to do and uh, I was like all over the place <laughs> one day wanting one thing and the other day wanting the other so I ended up uh, unraveling that uh, sweater I had not done much like about 10 centimeters in the yoke and then looking for another one I uh, found one pattern from Andrea Maori um, the stone stone crop I think it was a stone crop that has it is striped and had some bubbles there are stripes with color work and there are some uh, stripes with bubbles and uh, I decided to make it in uh, white and um, the color work to be in yellow I think I, I 
still have it somewhere. I didn't unravel that. And while I was trying to do that, uh, it was uh, a little bit difficult to make the bubbles. I was making samples first to see how to achieve the best result on bubbles because I have not knitted any of them. And um, she uses the crochet method and I am I don't crochet and it just didn't come natural to me to create these bubbles but I really tried very hard and I think that in the end after I had cast it on the sweater after making like uh, 15 or 20 bubbles it could uh, not uh, very easy I could not do it very easily but I could manage to take off the loop the final loop that created the bubbles because before it was like a mess it took me half an hour to make one bubble anyway and after uh, casting casting on that one and knitting a little bit i again fell out of love with that pattern and uh, decided to leave it and uh, look for another one and that was when back in november ellie from skanger knit uh, released her a uh, festive sweater i know there was something with this sweater uh, she has released something also last year but uh, i don't know exactly the details but i saw a post of her saying that uh, this pattern was out and i have been wanting to create a festive um, sweater for a very long time i'm not a religious person but uh, i like the holidays just for what it means to be with your family, to spend time together and uh, all that and from this side, uh, this point of view and so uh, of course I cast it on this sweater and uh, I use the same colors that Ellie had in her um, pattern red and white and I'm so much in love with this one I, I have also been in different phases with this one <laughs> and I almost ripped it out also I'll tell you about and uh, but I'm glad that I didn't do it in the end that I kept working on it so uh, uh, this is a yoked sweater I'm working it on um, a fingering weight yarn and the gauge that I had was not similar to the one that is in the pattern I don't remember what estimation, what cal calculations I did, but I ended up making size 5, while if I had the same gauge and according to my measurements I am between size 3 and size 4. But I cast it on size 5 and now that I have tried it on it is the perfect size for me. So. When I finished it, I will check also the gauge and uh, I will uh, tell you about what, what differences there were. So, and um, I, I also made another, uh, I made an alteration, which is uh, when I separated the bodies from the sleeves, because I am a C-cup, I'm bigger in the bust, in the front size, side than in the back, I always make uh, my sweaters uh, to be bigger in front than the back so instead of a separate, instead of having instead of having the back the same with the front I made it bigger I think I made it bigger by 24 stitches yes I took 24 stitches from the back and I added them in the front and I have tried it on and it fits very well. I really love this. It's a fantastic pattern. It is the first one that I need from Ellie and it is very well written. And uh, of course the design is incredible and I like the fit. Everything is great about it. And I, lo I look forward to finishing it and wear it next winter. Would you wear, I, I will wear this not only during um, the um, holidays would will you wear it uh, the entire winter because i'm thinking of doing that because okay the themes is like uh, the reindeers and the trees and they remind uh, christmas but it's winter in general i don't know what what do you think guys would you wear it 
because I find it to be a shame just to wear it like for one or two weeks. So this is it. Now I am at a point I have knitted so much from the separation and um, I don't know uh, the, what length to make with it. Maybe I will add another chart because Ellie has also uh, added a piece of uh, um, there is an uh, there is a page with uh, that has uh, many charts on it so that you can um, you can knit it like in a totally different way not to have the same motives and you can make it like uh, as festive as you want it to be because there are like charts uh, with uh, gifts with also um, um, Christmas tree decorations the balls that you would decorate the trees there are so many different charts I'm not going to add any of them but I think there is another pattern with a different tree and I think maybe after completing this chart that I am now that is a flower after completing that I think uh, adding the other tree and then add the last chart that is the reindeer uh, but uh, the face actually you see the reindeer from the front not like this so this is it okay I lost some stitches here it's okay <laughs> I will fix it later that's it about my festive yoke and uh, yes what I wanted to say yes the problems that I had at first so I started this in um, in uh, end November and I really was under the illusion that I was going to finish and wear it for Christmas but uh, of course it didn't happen for many reasons and, and I knew it I like I wasn't uh, I knew that something will happen because I always wear uh, I will always make things off season like I will need um, a summer sweater that will be finished end of summer and I have to wait one year to wear it and I knew that something will go wrong and I would not finish it in, on time but anyway I, I really tried it first and I was knitting every day on it but back on December I started a job and uh, it was uh, really hectic because I was working uh, eight hours a day in this job and of course I had one hour commute to go and one hour to come back and apart from that I had also the other activities that I have in my normal life which which is I run an Airbnb and uh, I also teach uh, knitting and um, weaving classes and of course uh, dyeing uh, for my shop and I also um, am studying Spanish and I had Spanish twice a week and the entire month of December was so hectic like I was with three hours sleep every day and um, it was very difficult so I had no time and I really was not in the mood to make anything in general so this was left behind I'm not working at the job anymore and so uh, after that in January end of January that I stopped working from the, there um, I took this back and uh, I was seeing how uh, the gauge that I have here is like quite a loose gauge if it is if you can tell from the video but it, this is really loose for color work at least for how I like color work to be and like you can see that it looks a little bit sheer can you tell and um, I was not feeling like I'm happy with the fabric that I had and I really seriously considered to unravel it and look for another project I was like I had knitted I was here in the first flower and then I was thinking like okay this has been for months now that I cannot decide what to make and I'm really a project knitter I want the finished object I enjoy the process of knitting but what drives me more is uh, to get the finished object and to have the satisfaction of wearing what I make and um, in, 
after like thinking it a lot and also left it for two weeks and only thinking what to do then um, I decided to keep knitting on it, on it and I'm glad I did that because when I had progressed quite a lot when I arrived here at the trees and I put it on I really loved how it looks and although the gauge is not perfect uh, because it's loose I think that I'm it, it is growing on me <laughs> And um, I think that I'm going to wear it. So there is always one small possibility that after I finish it, uh, I will not be happy with it and then I will unravel it. But I think it's very small because lately, uh, although in the past I didn't like um, garments with loose gauge at all, uh, after I made the poppy uh, sweater by Tiff. If Milan knits, I'm not sure the designer is named like this, but this uh, sweater is designed to be in, lo in loose gauge. And um, after making that and seeing how much I wear it, I think that um, loose gauge garments have grown to me. And I'm starting to accept them. <laughs> anyway, so this is it. This is all I had to share with you about knitting. I want to I want to start um, another a knitting pro uh, project that is like a very plain knitting. Probably I want to start a sock because I have not knitting uh, I have not knitted any socks last year at all, and I really want to do and I have the yarn so I want to do that, and uh, probably I will do that. I will cast on a sock project, just plain stocking at a vanilla sock. That's it for now and uh, thank you for watching, I hope you liked what you see and uh, we'll see you next time, bye!